Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to explore how to properly make use of the displacement textures in Polygon materials using Maya and Arnold. Before we get started, let's take a look at the material we'll be using. It's Ground Asphalt Broken 001 and is easily one of my favorite ground textures here at Polygon. Um, it's brilliant for demonstrating this displacement, which is why I picked it. <laughs> um, I've already got the 4K version saved to my hard drive and I'll include a link um, below the video. As a note, uh, I would recommend getting the, the 4K version if you're going to be following along because with displacement you really do want as much detail from the texture as possible. So let's take a look at what it is we're going to be doing. You've probably heard of a bump map before which is used to artificially give the impression of height in a material. Well a displacement map is different. It is used to literally deform the object based on the values of the texture with the black areas being the deep crevices and the white areas being the peaks. It results in a far more realistic material. Okay, so let's get this effect set up in Maya. First thing we need to do is bring in the uh, the material. So I'm gonna go up to Custom and then Polygon Material Converter. I covered how to use this converter in a previous video. Uh, in case you've not watched it though, I have included the link below the video. Right, so now I need to find that ground asphalt broken 001, there it is. Select the folder and the converter's found it. Good, good, good. Let's just load the material, okay. So that's that being brought into to Maya for us. If I open up the Hypershade, we will now see it. There we go. And first thing I'm gonna do is click on the floor plane and then hold the right mouse button on the material and assign it. There we go. I'm gonna hold the mouse button again and load up the graph network. Just so we can see what it is the converter's done. Um, if you click on this final node in the uh, in the graph and then click on the in-out connections button, it will uh, reveal the displacement texture that's also been brought in. So technically, we're, we're, it's all good to go. We, we, we've our, dis our displacement materials there, um, along with all the other textures, and uh, you, you expect a decent result. But as you'll see in just a moment, we are not done. <laughs> Firstly though, I'm going to click on the first node, this UV one, um, oh, notification up there apparently, because um, we need to adjust the tiling a little bit, um, ju just going off uh, memory, I think a value of around 10 uh, worked well there, so we'll use that, close down the hypershade and uh, do a little render. And yeah, there, there we go. Um, well, it's not looking horrible. It's uh, clearly a, a good PBR material. We, we're seeing the different amounts of reflection on the different types of surface and plenty of bump mapping going on and whatnot, but it is most definitely a material on a flat plane, which, which isn't kind of the effect we were going for. We want this to look like a, a realistic, um, almost like a sculpted uh, scene rather than, rather than a flat plane. So even with the displacement texture brought in, it's not yet able to do its job. Uh, and we need to make a few adjustments to our floor plane um, to allow that to happen. So let me just minimize this out of the way for a sec. Bit there. I'm gonna click on the floor plane, go to the attribute editor, and then under the plane shape uh, section, you'll see this smooth mesh and subdivision levels areas, yeah? In fact, it probably normally looks like that, but when you click on it, it'll expand out and it's this area that we're going to work on because what we need to do is give the displacement enough geometry to work with at the moment it's basically trying to um, displace this this plane but this plane is made up of these giant uh, quads giant polygons um, which just isn't enough it needs way more detail than that and this is how we how we uh, allow that so click on Smooth Mesh Preview and Displacement Preview. And then we can start to see it's having an effect. And this is with one level of subdivision and even that is pretty good. It's, it's uh, yeah, the, the, the result is quite nice. Um, and you can see that the plane is, is being uh, distorted, distorted and deformed by the displacement uh, material, which is good. Now what we want to do though is uncheck use preview level for rendering because this will allow us to increase the increase the amount of division and, and increase the quality even further so i'm going to set that to a value of about four maybe even three will do the trick no i'll leave on four <laughs> um 
And that's pretty much it. Uh, now, when we hit render, we'll see something quite different. Now, you can definitely see a slight difference with this render. It, it is starting to, to bump out of the floor, but it needs a few... It, 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 we need to take it further. So what we're actually going to do is raise the division level to 7. Now, one thing to bear in mind with the division level is the higher you raise it, um, the more of an impact it's going to have on the render time and the amount of resources that it uses. Um, I mean, currently um, on division level 4, it was taking up uh, nearly 2 gig of, of uh, memory. Um, and as you increase that further, that, that figure will go up and up. And we've just got a single plane here. If this was an entire scene with a bunch of other objects, maybe even they have their own displacement and whatnot, you can soon get to a situation where you'll run out of memory. So it, it is kind of a balancing act. Um, but in this instance, we'll just go all out, whack it up to seven. What I'm also going to do is go back into our node graph and find the displacement node, which is this one here. And I'm going to raise the strength of this to about 0.5. And that should, that's probably a bit harsh actually, maybe 0.4. Uh, yeah, I think 0.4 will work well for us. It is really handy that it kind of previews it, uh, albeit not particularly great, um, in the in the viewport here. So if I hit render now, we should see, in fact what I'll do, because I'm fairly confident this will be the the last one we'll need to do, I'm going to up the render settings a little bit in terms of resolution so we can get a good look at it. There we go. Right, so I'll render this and we'll see what we get. And there we go. This this is this is why I like this material so much. I mean what 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 a difference from that flat, boring plane that we started out with to this. Um that looks like we've spent hours sculpting away in ZBrush or Mudbox or something <laughs> rather than just assigning a material to a plane and, and changing a few settings. Um, but yeah, the uh, the power of displacement. So in summary, we've taken a material from Polygon.com, brought it into Maya using the Material Converter, um, made some adjustments to the displacement settings and the uh, subdivision settings of the object itself, uh, and then rendered it out with Arnold.